Hey there, it's Sunday morning and uh, I normally make these after I post a main channel video. I haven't done that uh, uh, for the past two weeks actually because um, in case you're not aware, my channel was hacked and taken over and uh, eventually taken down. I say eventually, but it was actually just a couple hours after the hijackers got a hold of it that my entire uh, main channel is taken down and uh, I'm at the point now where I've got it back and the channel's back up and back to normal sort of <clears throat> but um, I haven't made any new content yet I'm trying to get back into the swing of things uh, which has been difficult I have to admit because this has been okay for that first week where I still the channel still wasn't up and actually was still in the hijackers hands um, I was on high alert like I was I was adrenaline pumping you know level 10 type thing and after I finally got it back I was coming down from that adrenaline high and all I wanted to do <laughs> all I wanted to do was was sit down comatose really because uh, my level of uh, panic <laughs> while this was happening was so high for those of you that don't know what doing all this on YouTube is if you're making your living from it well it's, it's something like you've been doing a job for the past 10 12 years and you get up on Monday morning <laughs> and you go to work and they won't even let you in the building <laughs> okay and they won't even talk to you they won't let you in the building they won't talk to you your job is gone your pay is gone you know everything that you made up in the weeks prior to you know your last pay gone gone to someone else so um yeah quite a quite a an unpleasant uh experience and um you know i can't say for certain what it was um fashionable thing these days is to blame it on climate change i'm not going to go there <laughs> Uh, YouTube calls this hijacking because that's exactly what it is. Somebody gained access to my information, probably my password, and found some way around the two-step uh, verification and uh, captured my account. They hijacked my account. And it had to be something that I did. Simple as that. Even the fact that I used the same password for like, I don't know, half a dozen things, which is a big mistake. Uh, you shouldn't do that so anyway <laughs> I'm almost back to normal and hopefully I'll be back to well I'm gonna get back into doing stuff this week I said to my um, supporters on locals and patreon last week uh, that I'd be getting into it last week um, but I couldn't like I said I couldn't I couldn't do anything I that's not true I did some things but I didn't do that. Like while all this was happening, I was doing stuff around the house just so I wouldn't be sitting there like clicking refresh on the, on the, um, on the email thing from, from YouTube support. I had to go do something. So I was doing some stuff around the house that I needed to do. And, um, but I couldn't come out here and do any, pro I, I like, I could do mindless stuff, but I couldn't do anything that I had to concentrate on. I would get too distracted. And the last thing you want to be, when you're out here in the workshop using, you know, tools like table saws and stuff like that is being distracted with stuff. So I didn't do anything um, in that regard, but I'll be getting back to stuff uh, eventually. But in the meantime, I did do a couple of things um, out here. I started one before um, the, um, the thing happened, which I'm really not in, you know, I'm, I'm not enjoying talking about it either. So probably going to be the last time I'll talk about it here. Um, I, I was doing, like, I got a comment on a video. I can't recall which one it was saying that um, particle board, you know, is not good for a high humidity environment. And everybody knows that, right? You know, the particle board. I'm using plywood that's got a particle board core and you know everybody knows that that doesn't like water but humidity is kind of a different thing right the humidity in the air 
how does it react to that? So I ran a test and I think I made five samples. Actually, I got the pictures here on my laptop um, that we can look at. Okay, the first one shows the five samples. From left to right, it's Baltic birch plywood. And then it's um, veneer core plywood, um, you know, cabinet grade maple uh, veneer on the outside, poplar core. And the third one is particle board plywood with maple veneer on the outside and particle board core. Number four is MDF and um, number five is solid ash, a piece of solid wood, solid hardwood. So I thought that would be, you know, five good choices there, five very common things that people use to build, you know, furniture and cabinets and stuff with. So. Um, what I did was I took those and I put them in a large Ziploc bag with a soaking wet piece of paper towel. I put the piece of paper towel in the middle and I arranged the pieces of uh, wood and wood product around it so that they would be equal, well, as close to equal distance from the paper towel as you possibly can get. And I left it there. <laughs> I left it in the bag while my channel was being hacked. So that week that I was trying to frantically get that back, they were sitting in the bag. And I should mention that before I put them in the bag, I measured how thick they were. And I measured the, th like, all of these were varying thicknesses, even on a small sample like that, there were varying thicknesses. I measured the th thickest reading that I could get on them. And then I marked that directly on the piece. And I also weighed them but um, that turned out to be not as much of a factor. Like I didn't, I weighed them before and I weighed them after and there was no, my scales is, um, the resolution on my scale is one gram. So there wasn't enough um, of a difference to show up on my scale. So yeah, I marked the, the weight on there and uh, after they came out of the bag, I measured them again. And once again, I measured the thickest part because after they were in that bag, then there was even more of a disparity between the thinnest and the thickest. And I wrote down the measurements directly on the piece. And I also calculated how much of a change there was in the pieces and the thickness. And for the Baltic birch, it was 3.9%. For the veneer core plywood, um, hardwood plywood, it was 2.7%, which is nice. Uh, solid wood, the solid ash was 2.6%. So even that was the best as it turns out. And for the particle board core, it was 5.9%. And last of all is 9% for the MDF. So yeah, there's a substantial gain in thickness after, you know, these products are um, exposed to high humidity. But Okay, this test was kind of extreme, a soaking wet paper towel inside a very closed environment where nothing can escape, uh, left for six days. So you could really see a difference. So it's you know, in that way, unless your thing is sitting in water, it's really not that realistic, but it does give you an idea. Also, I left it for nearly a week. Okay, it's been sitting there. Those pieces were sitting there. I wanted to measure how much they go back to normal after um, after they're taken out of the bag and put in the normal humidity of the room because that'll give you some idea of their elasticity. I mean, if something gets um, gets damp and then swells, what's the chances of it going back to normal? As of today, well, actually last night, um, the only ones that have returned to normal are the veneer core, uh, hardwood plywood, and the solid wood, the other three, the Baltic birch, um, the particle uh, core one, and the MDF are still slightly swollen with the worst of those being the MDF. So yeah, there is a lot of truth to the humidity thing, but it has to be fairly extreme. I mean, obviously nothing that's wood, like organic, they want to keep this from swelling, you should be sitting in water. Like if you have a water, a standing water problem, 
and you you don't want to have these things in contact with it. But um, the amount of things swell, I mean, it could cause problems if it's really high humidity. Like, and I think the humidity that was present inside that bag would be something like, uh, I don't know, a bathroom that's being used a lot, like a shower running maybe three, two, three times a day with not good ventilation or really long hot showers. Uh, another one would be um, outdoors, uh, where it's really humid. Um, indoors, where you got air conditioning during the summer, that dries things out. Um, also in the northern climate, like I have here in the winter, everything gets really dry anyway. I want to talk briefly about something else that I started before this happened. It was never going to be a, a video, but I thought I would mention it here. I replaced the thing that I had for... Um, the chip collection for my planer, which has always been kind of a problem. I made it uh, with a screen on top for us and that didn't work, clogged up too quickly. And then I built this box with cloth on it and that worked better, but that would get uh, filled with chips as well. And also it started to tear because the cloth I used was old and worn out. And um, I figured I'd get around to this one day making a theme baffle that would fit on top and, and you know, down inside the bucket. And that's what I did. I had an old piece of plywood, half inch uh, spruce, so it's nice and lightweight. And uh, I cut out the top and I cut out the theme baffle, just a ordinary circles for both. And then I cut some strips to go around um, the rim so that it, it lips down on top of the large garbage cans that I have. And I added silicone around that um, in the corner to act as a gasket so it seals up better and got it all together. I just used three blocks to separate the theme baffle from the, uh, the cover and put it down, I think around four inches into the bucket. And I cut the inlet. Um, I took the inlet from the old one and I just cut the inlet on the new one on an angle with the hole saw and got that fastened in place. And that's where the chips come in. And then for a filter, I'm using an old, um, smaller shop vac filter that just goes on top and that works excellent i gotta say none of those chips that landed in that go, that go in reach that filter so it's working really well and it's on on the whole on the whole like it's no heavier than the other one it's a little bit bulkier of course because it's you know two layers but heavier is it's not it's good so i'll be using that from now on until i set something else up I'm thinking in the future, I'm going to try to do something else with dust collection, maybe um, you know, get a little bit more elaborate. Um, what I was about to do, uh, I talked about this before, my shop vac, I was going to put it in the corner. Now I've changed that to thinking that I'm going to put it out in the shed and then just ran, run a hose over and uh, you know have that out in the shed. And that way, that'll fill up. That, like it'll take, a, I think it'll take a full year for that to fill up. So I can go out there during the summer and dump it and uh, the next summer and dump it and so on and so forth until, you know, I'm dead. I'm gone. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so that's it. Uh, yeah. Hack update and uh, what I've been up to.